Okay, in this presentation we are going to look at non-parametric tests for two independent samples. Now there's a couple of different procedures that we can look at, or we will look at over the course of several videos. The one I'm going to look at in this particular video is called the Wilcoxon rank sum test. The reason is it's just actually just sort of easy one just to self to sort of ease ourselves into this sort of thing. There are more complicated ones that we can use later on that would be suitable for this example. But again, I'll just sort of go with an easy one to start off with. Okay. So a randomized exa experiment was carried out to test how well ethanox, a gas made up of 50% oxygen and 50% nitrous oxide, performed in reducing pain during a minor, sur minor surgical procedure. 20 patients were randomized to receive air, uh, 10 patients, and ethanox, 10 patients. So we have 10 patients each, 10 and 10. Okay. So immediately after the procedure, the, uh, the patients used a score of uh, 0 to 100, should be a little hyphen there, to record the level of pain that they suffered during the procedure. And here is a tabulation of their results. So two independent samples. Okay. So this person here suffered no pain. Okay. Uh, just as a remark, this is the lowest person there. So on a, the minimum, the lowest value there, we're just going to assign that a value 1. Uh, just as a remark, the highest value there seems to be 80. So we'll just actually mark that off as 20 there. Essentially, what we're going to do is just sort of rank them a little bit, okay? Now this just takes a little bit of time to go through it, okay? So the second lowest value there is 2. The third lowest value is 3. Next value then is 4, and so on, okay? This just sort of helps, just to sort of just look through it there. And from starting from the bottom, just count them up, count them out a little bit, okay? And you can go through them like that. So in in a practical setting, when you're doing this in an exam paper, uh, an exam situation, that might be a good way of doing it. There, the way I do it on the screen is more so just to get the point across on the screen, which is not exactly how you might do things in an exam hall, okay? So let's move on. Um, in situations such as these, when comparing two independent samples of subjective scores, remember, these are subjective scores. Briefly discuss the advantages and disadvantages of using non-parametric rather than parametric tests. Now, essentially, this sort of thing here, these scores, these, like, uh, the... These sort of, this sort of thing comes up quite a lot in life sciences, in medicine, in clinical studies, in psychology, and so on. So these non-parametric tests sort of deal with a lot of data that is hard to model, okay? So the parametric tests, uh, the most famous one being the t-test, I suppose, t-test, need assumptions about the distribution underlying the data. Often that it is normally distributed and continuous, okay? That might not be uh, the case in a lot of data you're working with in medical statistics. Uh, data is in the form of subjective scores and likely, unlikely to follow any common distributions and two sets of independent data may not even be the same shape, location, scatter, or skewness, okay? So you can't make any assumptions really about them at all, about how they're structured or how they're distributed and so on. So. Non-parametric tests allow simple characteristics of distributions to be compared with few or no theoretical assumptions. But however, having said that, they have less power when uh, compared to the corresponding parametric tests on which the, uh, in which the parametric tests are valid. If you can use a parametric test, if it sort of stands up, uh, if the assumptions hold, then you know, you're better off using a parametric test where possible. They therefore need larger sample sizes as well. Now, what we're going to do here is, of course, we're going to use a sort of pen and paper example. So we're going to sort of stick with a small sample size. I'm cheating a little bit, really, just to sort of make things a bit more practical for an exam, for a video like this, and what would be coming up in an exam situation. You probably would do this with software. Okay. Using an appropriate non-parametric test to determine whether uh, there is evidence that the pain scores differ. Okay, that's an important word there, differ. That, it, that actually sort of leads us to sort of say two-tailed. Okay, so they, the, you would express the null hypothesis as they don't differ and the alternative hypothesis as they do differ. Okay. 
So that's just as simple as that. Now, there's actually how you correctly state the math, uh, the mathematical statement regarding the null and uh, alternative hypothesis is in relation to a locational shift. But essentially, are they the same? Is there any effect at a practical level? Is there any difference? Is what we're looking at, or is one better at alleviating pain than the other or, or does it make any difference okay explain your conclusions in a manner appropriate for a doctor to understand including a comment of the implication of the sample size that that may have on your conclusion okay now so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to use the wilcoxon rank sum test okay and just to remark there's a different test called the wilcoxon signed rank test which is not appropriate here at all it's for paired data but something that you might use, and in fact I will do in a different video, is the Man Whitney U test, which is essentially a bit more calculations are involved there. Okay. Now uh, this is a non-parametric test to sort of see is is there any difference between uh, in terms of the location between one and the other. So actually I shouldn't have really wrote. Uh, specified that is there any difference yes or no the reason is that correct the there's a very subtle way of ex correctly explaining the what the uh, null and alternative hypotheses are for these tests okay uh, that at a practical level just sort of says is eth does the ethanox help or does it make a difference yes or no okay but uh, it's correctly in relation to a mathematical property of the distribution called the location that is what the test is about. I won't get into that there. Well, I, it is actually important, but it's a sort of theoretical thing there. So it is just a sort of remark that it is what they call the null hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis is in relation to a thing called location, which is sort of essentially a measure of centrality. Okay. Again, it's, there's, a, there's a, a, a subtle but strong point to be dealt with there, but I'm not going to do it in this video. Okay. Now, this test uses simple ranks to compare two samples in which the observations are not paired. Just to remark that it's not paired data, okay? We use a different percentage, uh, uh, procedure there. N1 and N2 are the sample sizes. Uh, just as a remark, it's very important to actually just keep track of um, your notation, particularly with these non-parametric tests. And you'll see that when you're sort of calculating uh, test statistics and so on, for some of these tests that you, you know, they, they, there's there's quite a lot of calculation goes into them, okay? And quite often that there's sort of conventions, for example, N1 is always assigned to the smaller of the two sample sizes, okay? Uh, first, rank all 20 items as follows. So this is what you should have done previously. So it's just sort of split that there into two, okay? Or this is just to sort of fold it over on itself. So here are our 20 values in ascending order, okay? Here is the groups that they're associated with, okay? Uh, really, I'm just reworking what I've done in the previous, uh, or just previously when I sort of started to look at the data. Uh, just as a remark there, you don't really have to do this, but uh, it does actually, in an exam situation, pay just to sort of show where your workings are because that is a very important matter in an exam situation. Not just get the right answer, showing where you get the right answer. Okay. So essentially, what we do here is that we have the ranks there. Okay. So this lowest value there is one, two, three, four, and so on, all the way up to 20. Okay. Now, so what we're going to do here is just calculate, sum up all the ranks that are associated with the ethanox there. So E, so we have 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Sorry, I think I've got one extra there. All right, no, that's all 10 there, yeah. Okay. So just sort of collect them all up and add up all of those ranks there. So if I added them all up, I should get 81. If I was to add up all of the ranks for A, it should be 129. I can just sort of calculate them out there, do it the same way. But also the sum of the ranks should be the sum of 1 all the way up to 20 added up, which is, you can figure that out, it's 210. So what is the difference between 81 and 210? It's 129, okay? Now, 
two-sided test. Okay. So the way the tables I use are distributed are sort of work that they sort of work on a one-tail basis. Okay. So essentially what I have to do here is go to the 2.5% set of tables here. Now this is actually very important just as a start because different textbooks and different uh, statistical tables work differently. So I uh, just be very, very careful about how that would work there. Okay. So the cell I'm looking for is 10 and 10. Those are the two sample sizes there. Uh, notionally, that's the smaller of the two, N1. Okay. And N2 would be the larger of the two. But in this case, it doesn't really matter. Okay. But, you know, just a sort of a. Uh, be careful about this. It, it was just we sort of got lucky here that they're both the same sample size. Okay. Now, so I have this at the back. Okay. So this is my. I didn't actually write it in there, but this is my uh, alpha equals zero point zero two five tables there. Okay. So essentially, what I uh, should do there is. I should have made it a bit clearer on this here. So essentially, N1, which is the smaller of the two, and N2, which should be the larger of the two, 10, 10, go out here, 78. Okay. So this is a two tail test. With alpha, the significance level, just picking 5% significance level, which is sort of what would be usual in um, undergraduate statistics. And so the answer we get there, when we look at it there, is 78. Okay. So uh, I actually have different tables there that is, uh, sorry, a little typo there. Let's not look at that. But this is the. 0 0.05 and this will be what we would use for one tailed test that's not how you spell tailed uh, which is not what we're looking at here okay so the test statistic we're looking at is essentially 78 so at a five percent level we cannot reject the null hypothesis that the scores uh, we cannot reject the null hypothesis that the scores do not differ. Okay. So just a just quick remark about the Man-Whitney. I think I sort of covered that point already. Okay. Uh, uh, using a 10% level, which is looking at the other tables, just sort of really as a remark. That's just sort of, I'm going to sort of disregard that. Okay. So overall, we do not have enough evidence to say whether or not there is an advantage for ethanox. So use a larger sample size. Okay. So just to sort of quickly remark, uh, essentially what should happen there is that the uh, it has to be less than this value here. That's just something I, I, we need to uh, uh, test. Is our test statistic less than our crit critical value? Okay. Now, just actually... That's a little bit different from when you deal with t-tests and so on, where you're actually looking for the test statistic to be greater than the critical value. That's not how it works here. It actually has to be less than the critical value here. Okay, so... Um, because we want it to be smaller, further away from the center, if you get me. So it has to be lower than 78. It has to be as low as... Uh, uh, under, uh, under 78 as much as possible to be as the two for there to be as much of a difference. Okay, so that's just how to interpret a test statistic. Is the test statistic less than the critical value? Okay, which is a little bit different from t-tests and so on. All right, we'll leave it there.